Notification Squad. What's going on, YouTube? Man, damn, let me get this mic straight. Hope everybody's good. Getting this uh getting this video series out. But as figured. As soon as you drop a video about Jordans, wow, some of the comments and even the inboxes I've been getting are insane. First of all, to all the people who want to say, man, you crazy as hell telling me I can't wear my Jordans and such and so forth. Hey, man, where are your Jordans? Walk around looking like a grown goddamn kid. But don't get mad when people, when you get profiled, pulled over, and treated like a boy. Do it. I mean, I'm quite sure you don't own stock in Nike. You ain't getting shit out of it. Except a bad image. No other, but here's the thing. Talk about putting up Jordan, such and so forth. No other group of men, no other group of men argues the point. No other group of men get so butthurt about Jordans. Why is that? Why is it? And you know what it is? Is because so many black men today are still mentally juvenile. You associate this damn shoe that it's a status symbol from the hood with who you are as a man and you actually think it looks good and should be worn over all other things. What other group of men do you see rocking Jordans? Especially in their 30s. I had some guy talk about, you know, yeah, I can see having your style start to mature in your late 30s or 40s. Mature in your late 30s and 40s? Mickey Ficky, that is middle age. Your style should mature in your late teens and 20s. Ladies, this is where I kind of start to sympathize with you. Because if this is the mentality of the men you're out here dealing with, guys, you can't get mad at these women. If you're a man out here still walking around arguing about I should be a sports fan and be able to wear my Jordans, Ninja, please. You ain't at the game. You don't have tickets. You don't have a, you don't, you ain't at the game. You, you ain't going nowhere. You just walk, you're just using that as an excuse to stay juvenile in your mentality because you don't want to grow up. I, I've, I've come at this from any different ways. And then here's the funniest part. I'll have guys who really think we're on the same level. I'm sorry. But, dude, unless you are an image consultant or someone who's professional in men's style or something, don't come in. That's like, I feel like BGS when, you know, these guys like City of Truth 91 start arguing with them. I'm like, what made you think that we're on the same level? And then to write an entire page about it. I grant I grant you that you can... I'm going to do a video showing you how to style Jordans on top of it. But I do think it's interesting that guys want to argue this point. So here's what I'm going to leave you guys. If anybody wants to argue the point why Jordans are so acceptable... Leave me in the comments section. Let me know the positive impressions Jordans leave on your image and imprint on other people. Don't tell me you like them. Don't tell me they're comfortable. Let me know what they communicate because clothes is clothing is, an, a, is a tool. You have to use it to your advantage. What advantage does Jordans or anything like that serve? To a man in after 25. I'm just another hype beast. Now here's the thing. Only basketball games. And even BGS said it. 
You don't play basketball. You play basketball in court shoes. Jordans really aren't the best shoes for hooping. Uh, and, and most, and I can look, and here's the funny thing. I can look at a lot of dudes' profiles. These dudes ain't running pickup games on the weekends. The, the reality is, and here's the truth. As much as we bang on women about being overweight, a lot of guys are very overweight today. Out of shape, couch potatoes, lazy. You're wearing jogging pants to cover up your, your bulky body, to cover up that belly. You're wearing sweatpants, not because you got a huge schlong, you cut more than sweatpants because you're, you're overweight. You're wearing them jerseys because they hang long and cover your belly. I, have n I rarely see a man who's in shape wearing sweatpants, sports team jerseys, and Jordans. The only exceptions is if you're in actual hip hop for a career or you actually play professional sports. So just left the barbershop, which ain't nothing but us, and we were all cracking up laughing at some of these responses. They like, these dudes act like they're teenagers. Joggers, but those can get fitted. Yeah, sweatpants cover increased waist size. Jordans aren't a thing anywhere. Jordans are the only thing with the youth in America um, because they really stem from hip-hop culture. Um, but like anything else, you know, you're supposed to grow out of it. Every generation has its thing. You know, we had parachute pants and jerry curls, but you grow out of your things. So... Here's the thing tonight. Um, so here's the thing, guys. If you if you're on the stream and you you know and here's the thing, I, I know some guys are diehard sneakerheads, but I know there are a couple of guys on my channel who are diehard sneakerheads, but they even admit they need to get better and start selling them. Um, but if you're a diehard sneakerhead and you got something that you want to tell me, call into the show tonight because I would love to hear you make a cogent argument as to why Jordans help your image. Not the fact that it's my right to wear them and I can do what I want to. That sounds like a woman. No offense, but that's just how that's how women argue. Number two, tonight's live stream is going to be on how to attract other women, uh, non-black women. I've had a lot of men actually hit me up more interested in their image and appearance and I guess just by what's in the air in the last month, I've had more women ask about uh, more sisters asking about how come men are attracted to intelligence and this and that and other women. Uh, I think a lot of uh, brothers don't really understand that you are attractive to, you got options. You got options, but the first thing you're going to have to do to attract other women is dress like normal, dress age appropriate. I can, um, I can guarantee you this almost 100%. You won't be dating outside of the black community wearing Jordans, uh, fitteds, uh, not in mass. One or two of you may, but you'll probably be dating white chocolate. You know, the white girl who's, who's really black or the Latina who really identifies. I'm talking about if you want to date, you know, uh, Chung Lee or... Uh, Milagro, so you want to date Bethany. I mean, dating across other cultures. I mean, really other cultures. Learning other cultures. I'm not talking about down with the brown. I'm talking about other stuff. Women are attracted, women across the planet are attracted to black men. And I think that's one of the major disconnects. You brothers don't realize how valued you really are. You brothers don't realize how many women say, you know what? I really think black men are attracted. And they're not talking about the dudes with the sag and they're talking about just average everyday guys. They're not talking about Boris Kojo and all these other things. They're talking about average everyday guys. So here's the thing. If you are a guy and you are five, six, or seven on the attractiveness chart, you're in the sweet spot to date any woman on the planet. Any woman. If you're three or four, we're going to have to do a little bit more tweaking. Uh, but if you're at eight, nine, or ten, 
you pretty much can have your pick across anybody because you're more select from an from an, an from an attention side. Yeah, really, really, Dark Me and Jeff, really. I, I mean, the thing is, it's like when someone said uh, when they go to plentyoffish.com or, or dating sites and it says no black guys. I respond to people like that and I've never had a problem. I've helped guys when I wrote their dating profiles. What they mean is no ninjas. That's what they mean is no ninjas. Or, you know, there are all kind of things. Even when I talked about my, my life, you know, my, my other life. Um, my other life. Women would be like, no black guys. And what they really mean was no ninjas women across the planet love black men we're forbidden fruit we are forbidden fruit to everyone and that is enticing to women did I ever have a jerry curl Eric Hall uh, no Eric Hall my hair is naturally curly you can't tell right now it's straight now but when my hair grows out um, I throw a little water on my hair and it just curls up in big locks it used to look like I had a jerry curl uh, when I was in the 80s, so I got the best of both worlds. A curl look without all that curl stuff. And yeah, people used to run their hair up in the hand up in the back of my head to make sure it was no naps in the kitchen. But I'm gonna tell you guys tonight how any black man, any black man, you can date any woman you want to. You just have to learn how to be attractive to other women. And it is a complete image thing. It is your appearance. You just have to look normal, neat, and presentable. You have to look like they can take you somewhere to meet, you know, their boss, their parents, their friends. That's it. You have to just look like normal. Your behavior, you know, that means you have to be able to carry yourself like, hey, how you doing? Shake hands, look people in the eye, you know, not be all standoffish and sullen and withdrawn. Your communication be relatively in you know you don't have to be brilliant just you know well versed and be able to hold a conversation and you'd be amazed at how many so only sisters like jordans yeah sisters in white chocolate i mean jordans are a black thing let's just be honest jordans are a, a, a black thing Jordans, you, you how many white men in their thirties do you see wearing Jordans that don't hang out with black dudes? How many Asian guys do you see in their late twenty, in their mid to late twenties, wearing Jordans that don't hang out with a bunch of black guys? How many any other culture outside of black men do you see wearing Jordans? That's it, and and you know, Jordans two three hundred dollars a pair. If you got 30 pair of Jordans, that's $10,000 tied up in, in Jordans. You can have a hell of a wardrobe for $10,000. What's up, Shelly Sterling? Man, and white dudes be rocking New Balance. Yeah, but that's my point. New Balance is a running shoe. Jordan is a st Jordans are they're almost like um, I won't say cowboy boots, but think of a utility shoe. Something that has no purpose. I mean, they're big, they're bulky, the colors are crazy. Exactly, you can buy. Not black men. Okay, I'm not splitting hairs. Not just black men. I don't do all that not all thing. On my channel, it is presumed that it's always not all. But in general, black men can date across the board. There are some races that won't there's some races that won't date white guys. But that's an individual per I mean there's some people in play any place that won't date something. But from a sec from a an attractiveness perspective, and Trust me, I'm, I'm like the United Nations of Benetton. I've dated a little bit of everything. I've dated somebody from every continent. I'm going to tell you, across the board, 
when women, and here's the thing, Ron Will said it best. When you really start hanging out with women, and a women really can tell you what they really think, when you can really get a woman to talk about how she likes sex, who she likes with, that kind of stuff, when you see a woman really get in her animalistic side, all I've met, well, I'm not, I can't say 100%, but the vast majority, 95 plus percent of women are attracted to black men. And the other 5%, I think the lying, they just don't want to say it because they'll be ostracized. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you a quick story and I'll get out of here. When I was in college, out my freshman year, uh, if you're familiar with sorority life on a big college campus, University of Oklahoma is 75% Greek. Three out of four people belong to a fraternity or sorority. But there are certain sororities and fraternities in white culture that are upper echelon, legacies. You have to have a lot of money. I dated a girl from a sorority called Kappa Alpha Theta. Blonde hair, green eyes, drop dead, gorgeous, just wow. Um, I met her through my roommate. You remember him? We got buck wild freaking nasty dated all the time but we could only hook up in my dorm room she'd have to because she lived in a sorority house and for and one of the things i remember her saying to me one one night after we just got crazy she's like i i i, I dig you so much and you know what you're black but you're not black black and then she's like oh my god oh my god oh my god i don't mean to be racist i don't mean the same thing prejudice i'm not prejudiced i'm like uh trust me I know you're not prejudiced. I've been all up and through you. I know you're not prejudiced. I know what you mean. I, I'm, I'm black. Hey, fat boy, get off my channel. I can do whatever I want to on my channel. Why are you here? If you don't like how I run my channel, go to one of the other million channels. Del uh, ban him. Don't, don't time those people out. Ban them. I don't, uh, this is a happy community. So basically, I learned there. But here's the thing: I couldn't. She, she was her father was very, very prejudiced. So for three years, we had an undercover relationship. We'd see each other on the yard, but we had to act like we didn't know each other, which only made it hotter. So if I saw her over there with all of her little sorority sisters driving the Volkswagen Cabriolet with the, with the. Uh, convertible and this and that you know we'd have to act like we didn't know each other and then late late at night she'd sneak into my dorm room and yeah it was hot it was hot 50 shades of gray hot but her junior year we had to have a conversation she came to school to manage man she came to school to major in mrs she came to school to find a husband it was the family business so we had to stop seeing each other because Deltas are real freaks. Try delts. Yeah, try delts. Everyone else has. Delta, delta, delta. Try delt. Yep. So she's like, you know, I, we, we can never be boyfriend or girlfriend. We can never get married. I have to go find a husband. I understood. We stopped seeing each other. Uh, and I, about nine months later, she was dating a guy. Two years later, they were married. They're still married to this day. I see her sometimes at alumni games. Uh, and we still had that secret relationship. And, she's, and she told me. Um, this is pre-internet. But she told me about five years after college. She's like, you know, I still think about you. But such and so forth. She's married, happily married to her husband. But what they taught me was that we are all the same. Men and women. Men like women. Women like men. Race is a construct. Now, the realities dictated a different life. You know, it was the late 80s, early 90s. But hey, and then I've dated across, you know, the place and I've seen other people do it. If you are interested in opening up your life and opening your mind, unlike the fat boy asshole that just came on here, I'm closed minded. You know, I always think it's funny people say I'm closed-minded when I just disagree with what they have to say. Anybody who have a name like the fat boy obviously got some issues with himself. Um, 
I'm one of the most open-minded people, but I know what I think and I know when I'm what I know. If you are actually interested in learning how to use your image to get the things you want out of life, and if you're interested in possibly dating outside of your race, outside of your culture, you can learn. You can learn how to carry your, how can use your image to attract. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to approach and all that other kind of stuff. That's not my thing. I mean, I can tell you my experience, but that's better for like uh, Steve and Alan Roger Curry and all that kind of stuff. You know, I stay in my lane. I can tell you what I know. So tonight, 9 p.m. Central Standard. Oh, yeah. Five, yeah, five dollars and up on Patreon, please. It's oh. Oh, Robert, you gonna you gotta call in tonight, man. It's my boy Robert. Uh, he said he used to live in Israel for two years. Oh my God, Europe. I mean, I've dated women from um, Switzerland, from Germany, France, Australia, my own, uh, uh, Spain. Spain was Spain. Yeah, I dated a woman who was Greek. Uh, Argentina. You already know uh, Chinese, uh, Shanghainese. Uh, Korean and Japanese, Vietnamese, Philippine, uh, Panamanian, Dominican. Damn, I was a hoe. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. It's what you do, man. It's what you do. So, 9 p.m. Yeah, well, did you date or have sex? Both. Um, hey, man, I believe in living life. Uh, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Let's have a conversation. Ladies also call in because here's the thing. A lot of guys want to date black women. They're just, you know, they don't know how to approach you. So I've had a lot of guys who'd ask me, how do, how do you approach uh, black women? Uh, especially after that movie, um, what was that movie? Try something different or something new or whatever, whatever. Look, people are people. And life is short. Experience everything. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to get up off of here. This one's getting a fresh cut. I want to date black women, yet I'm black. Well, see, that's the beauty. You can, you, <laughs> well, that's another, that's a conversation for another time. This one is going to be strictly dating outside. Laquan, uh, go ahead and join us tonight at 9 p.m. Peace out, folks.